starts rising quickly. I don't like hearing myself 14 seconds later. morning everybody I'm sorry for the technical difficulties this morning but now we're on and we're glad that you're with us here this morning uh, happy Father's Day to all the dads and other people who have filled the role of father in other people's lives I know that I have a father that I'm really appreciative of but I've also had other men in my life who have been really powerful uh, this morning we welcome you to worship and we're glad that you decided to join us for worship so wherever you are even after our technical difficulties, take a deep breath, and let's not forget that uh, we are the church together wherever we are, and that making others a priority is a fundamental Christian value. And I pray we can all be, continue to be graceful and patient in these days as we prepare to be open, reopen with healthy and safe practices. Pastor Jen is on vacation this morning, and so we welcome our youth director, Ashley, as our assisting minister. Uh, we, also ask, or we also thank Max and Janice Jeffrey for being our producers for today's video. You like that title, you guys? Producers, yep. Max gave me the thumbs up, so. We invite you to take a moment and gather the following items and place them on your table. A candle, matches or a lighter, a Bible, bread, and wine or some juice. If you don't have these items, that's okay. God will still show up in our homes, at our tables, and in our hearts. If you have any youth in your home this morning, we invite you to find a Bible and look up the reading together. Matthew chapter 10. Let us pause for a few moments to pray and gather your items. As we light our candles or we feel the sunshine shining on us, God's love, hear these words. We gather to meet God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to be aware of your presence in our day. For you, Lord, are here now. Your Spirit dwells within us to bring you our worship and to offer our praise, to be conscious that you walk beside us and we do not make this journey alone. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, draw near to us as we draw near to you. Amen. Our first hymn is Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus, number 802. Oh, 
deep celestial joy, all discomforts that annoy shall give way to mirth hereafter. Jesus, here I share your woe. Help me there your joy to Since by death he conquered death, he will free us from destruction, give to us immortal breath. Let us mortify a passion that would lead us into sin, and the grave that shuts us in shall but prove the gate of heaven. Jesus, here with you I die, there to live with you apart. Let us also live with Jesus. He has risen from the dead. As we call in response, uh, there is no call in response to our confession this morning, but I invite you to confess with me our sins. We are sinners. We are not only sinners. We are weak. We are not only weak. We fail. We are not always failures. We have destroyed. Also, we have loved. You, God, do not limit us to the stories by which the world knows us. You see much more in us than the labels we give ourselves. Give us courage to defy all expectations, especially our own. And in your love, we become all of who we are. Amen. This morning, the gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 10, starting at the 24th verse. Hopefully you already found Matthew 10 at the beginning, but if you haven't, I'll give you a second to do that. We could play like confirmation as Matthew in the Old or New Testament, like I do with them when they're in class. Matthew 10, starting at the 24th verse. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master the house of Beelzebub, how much more will the ma malign those of the household? So have no fear with them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill body but cannot kill the soul, rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are two, not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and daughter against his mother, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be a member of one's own household. Whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. 
and those who lose their lives for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, those are tough words from Jesus today. And at first glance, I think it looks like a war against our closest people. But I think if you take a closer look at the reading, what Jesus is really talking about is truth. A truth that must be acknowledged. A truth that will be hard to live out. A truth that follows the first commandment to the letter. You will have no other gods before the Lord your God. The truth is, no matter how much we want to deny it, we can become overwhelmed by the world. This truth, however, is sometimes shadowed by family and friends and by politics and society that tell us that those things are more important than God, that the overwhelming part of the world is somehow more important than God. Was it two summers ago we were at the youth extravaganza in, uh, in Houston, Texas, and part of our day was spent out uh, in the heat of Houston. It's very humid in Houston. If you think a humid day is here, uh, double it there. And we volunteered in the morning and then we met at a big rally in this park called Emancipation Park in Houston. And uh, there were probably hundreds and hundreds of kids there and the mayor of Houston was there and the local ward a leader was there and lots of public leaders were there. And we learned in that park, in Emancipation Park, that it was purchased by some churches as a park for the celebration of Juneteenth, the day that Texas slaves learned that they were freed, that they were emancipated. And it came so far after the real emancipation legally took effect that news took so long to get there. That's why we have Juneteenth. And that celebration in that park then became a ritual and it became every year. And so this park is now Emancipation Park and the street that runs along it is Emancipation Boulevard. And I was in that park and I was getting a little overwhelmed with all the people that day. And so I kind of wandered away to the edge of the park by myself. And on a building across the street from the park was this little sign. And on it, it said that no lie can live forever. That's all it said. There wasn't the name of a business or anything. It just said, no lie can live forever. That's the gospel for today. To follow Jesus means that no lie gets to live forever and that no lie is more important than Jesus. That sign standing in Emancip Emancipation Park where lies were continued to be told to slaves so that they wouldn't be free became truth through time and through persistence of people. The truth is, Jesus isn't talking about just heaven this morning. He's also talking about right now. Seeing Jesus as your Savior isn't just about the end of your life, but it's also about right now. It's about uncovering lies that have covered up the truth either in you or about the world we live in for too long. And the truth is that Jesus sets us free first and foremost, free from the power of death and free from sin. That time in Emancipation Park opened me up to the idea that I grew up in a town where I could go wherever I want without fear. And that the idea of freedom wasn't just a gift, but a right. It wasn't something given to me, it was something I simply had. I grew up knowing that police were there to help, not to be feared. In Emancipation Park, I sat in the middle of people who knew that lies would not keep them down even though lies tried to define their whole life, that their lives were worth something even if they were told their life was a lie. Those early people, and many still, cling to the story of Jesus, a colored man who was killed by the establishment as a source of freedom and truth in their own lives. All Christians surround themselves with this truth, the freedom that is understood within their own worlds. And the truth is, to stand up for freedom for all through Jesus means that we have to make tough decisions, that we have to have tough conversations. That's probably the hardest place to start because most of all those tough conversations can divide people for a time until we can come together again. Jesus doesn't abandon us in this time. The end times aren't here yet, and so we still have time to repent, to learn, and to act. Knowing the truth and living the truth are two different things, and it often takes us time to live into each. Recently, I've heard people making COVID-19 response 
a political one. Even heard word that it's a conspiracy by whatever party is talking at that time, depending on who you listen to. But I guess I just don't see it that way. In fact, scientific data shows the opposite. COVID-19 doesn't seem to care who it infects. Gender, race, social class, wealth, or lack thereof, the virus doesn't care. It doesn't even care if you're a Democrat or Republican. The truth is, following Jesus means making tough choices. It means putting others first, like Jesus does time and time again. We need to live into the truth that somehow the world doesn't need to divide us anymore. And that following Jesus means that we have the opportunity to bring people together. Wearing a mask in public is a truth banner sometimes that shows others you aren't just caring for yourself, but caring for others. Often though, even this has become somehow political. Someone I love recently was in a hardware store with a mask on and was confronted by another person who called him a communist for wearing the mask, yelling at him in the middle of the store. Often the truth divides. Jesus doesn't mention politics this morning, and often he doesn't. Which is why I've taken a stand in my life that I invite you to think about too. That our politics would be informed and led by our faith in Jesus, not the other way around. That is, before we tell anybody our political party, we'll tell them our faith. That our faith in God will inform how we work and live in the world. And before we act, before we vote, before we protest, we will look for the ways to live in the Bible, in prayer, and in conversation with other Christians. Too often I fear it's been the other way around. Politics first, Jesus second. It's very clear this morning that Jesus doesn't want that. Follow me, he says. Know the truth. But also know that this truth won't be easy to complete. There will be pain, there will be hurt feelings, sometimes even within our own selves. And so I invite you to follow Jesus this morning, maybe in a new way that you haven't thought of before. Follow Jesus into a complicated and chaotic world. Follow Jesus into the dividing. And most of all, begin the conversation with those you love. Not a fight, not a political debate, but a conversation about what it means to listen to Jesus uh, in the middle of this quickly changing world? What does it mean to follow Jesus into conversations about racial inequality? What does it mean to confront your own stereotypes and bias? And by the way, we all have both of those things. What does it mean to safely live so that others can safely live? You'll have to face the truth in yourself and others by doing this. We will have to divide sometimes in order to conquer. But that doesn't mean we aren't all still the family of God. We are. If we hold that truth as our focus, that we are the family of God first and foremost, then the conversations, the, even the tough ones that we have to face, are worth it. Because we'll begin and end in reading scripture, in praying, and in listening gracefully and closely to one another. And in it, we'll see that Jesus is leading the way, all the way, all the time. Amen. As grateful ones behold the gift, the Son of God most high, the Father's plan to heal our sin, the word of life draws nigh, the word of life draws nigh. As Grateful ones receive the gift and wear upon your head 
His mark the seal, his victory won, and by that cross be led, and by that cross be led, as grateful ones accept the gift, take ye. Take drink and live, and with the host of heaven join our endless praises give, our endless praises give, as grateful ones unwrap the gift and marvel in its glow, then spread good news to everyone, so all the gift might know, so all the gift might know, as grateful ones become a gift, limbs grafted to the vine, his hands, his feet, we do God's will, each guided by Christ's mind, each guided by Christ's mind. Behold the gift, receive the gift, accept the gift, unwrap the gift, as grateful ones become a gift, each guided by Christ's mind, each guided by Christ's Thank you, Deacon Bob. I invite you to pray with me and your other members wherever they are. Oh God, we come to you in prayer to see that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Let the truth that we follow you lead us into freedom that we have only dreamed of. Let our wonder at creation, our love of the church, and our service to others begin and end with you. We pray especially for fathers this morning. Let their leadership as a parent be inspired wholly by your Holy Spirit. Give those with grief and illness the comfort they need from you and from our hands. All this we pray in, the, in your name, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share God's peace with each other at home or if you are able to, to text someone or call someone later in the service, that's a great thing. God's peace, Balcony. At this point in the service, we would normally be handing baskets to each other as we offer our financial gifts of well-being to, of the church. Of course, that's not possible, so we invite you to remember your generosity to keep things like your church functional during this time until we can meet back together again. If you'd like to know more about giving online, which is a really easy thing to do, you can see the comments below or call the church. Uh, your generosity, of course, is a blessing to our whole community. Now, no matter where you are, we invite you to join us around this table, Christ's table, a table where everyone is welcome and everyone is fed. For we need each other and we need Jesus right now. Even as we're far apart, we trust that Christ will draw us all close together through this meal and as we gather, we remember that Jesus and his followers gathered around a table too, hiding themselves away for safety and for life. And as they did, they watched as Jesus took bread, broke it and gave it to each of his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then he took a cup and passed it to everyone saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As we share at this table, O oh God, give your grace. Extend to all who participate with us now, even as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to share God's meal with each other this morning. The body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Please pray with me. Creator God, we give you thanks for the grain farmers, the bread makers, the grape growers, the juice makers. Redeemer God, we give you thanks for all that we remember as we have shared this meal, your birth, your life, your death and resurrection. Sustaining God, we give you thanks for the eternal presence of your spirit with us, surrounding us and filling us with divine love. May this meal we have shared renew us and inspire us to join more joyfully with you as you work, with, as you work for peace and justice in the world. Amen. We sing the hymn, Lift High the Cross.
big thank you to Max and Jere Janice Jeffrey for helping with production this morning and for Ashley willing to be in front of the camera this morning, which was very nice. Uh, God's blessing be upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.